A sweep of Arizona was less than dominant, but USC stands at 2-0, going to Utah to take on the Utes in their first game of the season. we got Alicia De Artola on the line from Reign of Troy to help us break down the Trojans. Alicia, how you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I am doing just fine. Of course, it's a little bit earlier for you on the West Coast, so we appreciate you stopping by. All right. Yeah, um, I'll try to be awake for this. <laughs> stay awake. I'll try to keep it going. No, you do a great job for us each and every time. So we've got a decommit, which isn't necessarily uh, atypical for this time of year. So not a big alarm there, but still a really good player in Philip Riley out of Florida, decommitting as a roughly top 20 quarterback, top 40 player in Florida, uh, defensive back again, uh, top 300 player nationally. Yeah. And so he's an interesting case because he had decommitted from uh from Notre Dame and then a few days later committed to USC and that was uh you know j just a, a few weeks ago and then there was sort of talk that he was going to flip back to Notre Dame and that is exactly what has happened so uh it, it's I mean, we hardly knew him <laughs> it's kind of the the situation that USC is in with that so uh it's it's something to uh, that USC is, is obviously going to be uh, not not super happy about, but it, it's also a flip flop back and forth between between USC and Notre Dame. And we still have got uh, roughly about five to six weeks before uh, National Signing Day. Less than that, actually, mid December coming up here. Uh, USC a two and zero. Your thoughts about the first two wins again? The sweep of uh, the two Arizona schools. Uh, not scoring a ton of points until the last five minutes of each game, but uh, getting the job done with uh, two touchdown drives in each game in the last five minutes or so. Yeah, it's, you know, a win is a win. USC gets to say that. Uh, a late comeback is always having the skill to, to pull that off is always a good thing. But aside from that, these have not been good enough performances for USC. And, uh, you know, the, the Arizona game, you could look at it and the, the Arizona state game, I'm sorry. You could look at it opening week jitters. ASU is, is, is a dark horse kind of team. Herm Edwards has them on the way up. So a tight game there, you just shrug and you move on week two against Arizona. Arizona is not a good team. They are not an up and coming team. They are a team that Kevin Sumlin is on the, the chopping block. His, his seat is almost as hot as Clay Hilton's is. And that there's no, good reason that USC shouldn't have run away with that game, except that USC failed to execute. They made key mistakes and they are falling into the same uh, issues that USC has had over the last couple of years, which shows that not a lot has changed with a defensive coaching staff change with year two in the offensive system. And the buck has to come back to, to Clay Helton and, and really the – it's the weirdest two and O that uh, I've ever experienced with USC where it hasn't slowed down at all. Any of the talk in, in fact, it's probably sped up some of the talk about whether or not USC should, should make a coaching change. Yeah. 11 point favorite against Arizona state and white might be the best opponent in the regular season on paper. They skate by after being down by 13 points late. And then again, against Arizona, I was surprised. I watched like the last half of the fourth quarter surprised to check in and see them down. And of course they came back and got it done. They did run the ball well uh, with, with step and with car. Yeah. That's the weird thing is USC has incredible talent at, at quarterback, at wide receiver and at running back. Uh, the, we don't talk about those guys quite as much, but step and car are, are very good running backs it's frustrating to watch them run though, because so often USC's offensive line isn't giving them support. And so often they're, they're, they're put in running situations that they can't possibly succeed in. So, you know, if, if you caught the end of that game, you, you caught USC at its best, but the first three quarters was a, was a whole lot of USC being uh, very, very up and down. And one of the frustrations about that is the, the tendency for USC to do everything right and look beautiful and then on the very next play, everything falls apart and it gets blown up. And USC's running game is exactly a a, a microcosm of that, where Carr and Step, if you give them room, they're going to go and, and they're going to look good doing it. 
uh, and and they're going to power through tackles if they have to. But too often they're met in the backfield. Too often it's third and short, and USC can't uh, out physical the opponent up front, and it and it results in failed third gun, third down conversions. It results in in uh, backs getting hit in the backfield. So. Uh, USC is in this weird situation where they're running the ball well while also running the ball poorly. And so I say I struggle to uh, to put it all together and, and explain it really well, but that's the, the the situation that USC is in that makes it so hard to evaluate this team because there's equal parts like, wow, that was really good, and, and equal parts, wow, that's really not good enough. Well, it's been a baffling team for quite some time. We've got Alicia De Artola on the line from Reign of Troy. Please check out her work. She joins us uh, periodically and does an outstanding job for us. So take the deep dive over on Reign of Troy, USC taking on Utah. And um, I, I got to say that in taking in the last two or three drives of the game against Arizona, watched almost the entire game against Arizona State, Keaton Slovis made a pass on the second to last touchdown drive. Uh, and I wouldn't have thought that much about it, I would have thought maybe the ball slipped out of his hands. Drake Jackson made a great catch down near the goal line, about the seven yard line, something in that range. And but there were comments made by the broadcasters that maybe there's something wrong with Slovis. So I didn't know if he had made other throws like that. He almost threw a pick on the final drive. He got away with one. They got tipped to Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, your thoughts about his play and if there was anything to those particular throws. Uh, it's he his his arm there's it looks wrong it's just the eye it looks wrong he he is not getting a tight spiral he is having those wobbly floaters he's he's missing wildly on occasion and and he's obviously still getting the job done because he's putting up 350 yards a game and he's uh producing these late comebacks but it has been very strange and in, in week one there was talk of it against against asu there was talk of well, his arm doesn't look as sharp as it as it did before. What's going on there? But I think every, a lot of people, while mentioning it, were like, "Well, you know, it's it was a little bit wet in LA that that week. First game jitters, all sorts of things could have been going on there." Week two against Arizona again. You, you can't pass these things off as as just week one weirdness when it's happening again. And and they were openly talking about it on the broadcast. Beat writers have been talking about it. Fans have been talking about it. Everyone's been talking about it. Uh, Clay Helton got asked about it uh, on on his Sunday night conference call. Uh, he got asked about it multiple times on the uh, the, the the Tuesday uh, presser that they do. Graham Harrell got asked about it on the Tuesday presser. Keaton Slovis has been asked about it. They've all been sort of company line saying it's not it's not mechanical. It's not anything. It's it's uh, you know it was dry in Arizona and it was a little bit windy and. They didn't break in the balls quite as well as they they used to, and th there, there's a lot of excuses that are that are being thrown out there to try and minimize what everyone's seeing. Uh, Clay Helton even on on Tuesday said that he pretty much guaranteed that we wouldn't be talking about this next week because it won't be an issue. Uh, so that's a big statement to make from him, and we'll see if that carries through uh, at Utah. But uh, just just watching him throw the ball, it is not as crisp as it has been. And it's been a little bit of a problem for the flow and rhythm of USC's offense, which obviously they're still able to put up points, but they need to be putting up, you know, 40 points in these games when they're getting down, uh, when, when, when they have the, the offense that they have available to them. And instead they're sort of scraping by to get 30. Yeah. And only 20 points in the game against Arizona with five minutes left. Yeah. 34 looks certainly serviceable, not great. They are playing, uh, statistically the worst defense in the Pac-12 over the last five years, giving up the most points in the Wildcats. And as you mentioned, Kevin Sumlin coming off five and seven and four and eight, not looking good at Arizona. Uh, the defense in there, there are such amazing players, especially in the secondary in spots. You put it all together. They're, they're, they've been better, I think, these first two games than most of last season, but not great. No, not great. Uh, I agree with you that they've been improved in in that. I think that the players look more engaged. Uh, that, that that they are the the mistakes are not quite as crushing as they were last year. But there are still some some big issues that USC has, and it's it's 
for me, it's it really all revolves around the linebackers. USC doesn't really have the linebackers that they need uh, at inside linebacker to have this defense succeed because the idea is supposed to be that you have your your defensive line um, that is that is providing a foundation that is is, is uh, uh, occupying blocks and then your linebackers come up and make plays and USC's linebackers just aren't coming up and making the plays unless their name is you know Drake Jackson and Drake Jackson's making plenty of of plays he had two sacks in in the second half against Arizona and USC missed him in the first half when he had to go back to the to the uh, to the locker room to get an IV so the issue is really that Palayanateote hasn't taken the step forward that USC needs him to his partner and at inside linebacker rail and go forth uh, is uh, I, I, I see him trying very hard, but uh, you know, bad angles are bad angles and missed tackles are missed tackles. And, and uh, you, you know, you have a problem when now Teote goes out with a, with a concussion or concussion protocol as it were. And they bring in Raymond Scott, who was uh, up until a couple weeks ago, a, safety who was absolutely buried on the depth chart uh, and they convert him back to linebacker. He had come out of high school as a linebacker and he comes in and he's USC's best linebacker and um, you know, credit to him for, for playing all right. But like the truth is he, all he did was play all right. And it was an improvement on, on what USC had been throwing out there. So uh, my main concern at this point is the, the, the tackling angles that USC is taking, but really, even if everything got cleaned up in, in that regard, I, I worry that USC's linebackers are not up to par at this point. And Todd Orlando really needs them to be up to par uh, in order for this defense to, to work. Now they play Utah back to back. I should say Utah's the back to back division champions. Uh, Utah finally getting in the field, hopefully, as of this recording. And uh, the Utes, of course, eight and one last year in the Pac 12, and the one loss to USC in which. The Trojans' wide receivers pretty much abused their secondary, which was one of the best in the Pac-12. Uh, they're usually stout on defense, but they've had so much attrition on that side of the ball. They're almost, uh, in a sense, uh, the big narrative, Alicia, the anti-USC. They play above their recruiting ranking. They've got super stability. They're not flashy. They're not sexy. Kyle Whittingham's been there for 16 years. He's probably the last guy that would be on a hot seat. His seat's ice cold because he's done such a great job there. Uh Jake Bentley, most likely the starting quarterback. That's what I would expect out of South Carolina, although they've got uh, Cameron, Rise, Cameron Rising, the hot shot uh, transfer out of Texas. So um, some thoughts were that Arizona State would be the main challenger. Maybe Utah continues to be that team. Uh, your thoughts about the Utes? Well, it's so hard to, to know because we don't know many of the players that are going to be out there. But like you said, we do know Kyle Whittingham. And that is my perspective coming into this game is that yes, they are going to be breaking in a bunch of, of new faces, but this is still a Kyle Whittingham coach team. And we know what that looks like. We know that they will be uh, tough in the, in the trenches. We know that they will be uh, capable of, of, of being more physical than anybody that they play, particularly USC. And so that is my, is my main concern. Uh, I, I think that if USC had come out in the first two weeks and, looked stronger I would I would come into this game more confident because we don't know what what Utah has in terms of their personnel having seen USC in the first two weeks struggle against someone like Arizona who doesn't have great talent and doesn't have a an elite defensive coordinator and doesn't have you know all, all of the 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 ability that a, that a Utah squad even a, a rebuilding one would have and see them struggle like that against that team I am now firmly in the belief that Utah can win this game short of they're coming out of their COVID protocols and they have so much uncertainty and this is their first game and maybe they're going to be going through some first game jitters and, and all that kind of stuff that could, could get in the way of them. But man to man, you know, um, uh, unit to unit, I, I worry about USC in this game because I think in order to beat Utah in Salt Lake City, you have to be disciplined. You have to be physical and that's not what USC has been in any way, shape, or form in the first two weeks. So uh, color me concerned for this one. Folks, please uh, like the videos. 
comment, uh, share the videos out on social media, subscribe right here to Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We talk it up every day, best discussion, debate, and analysis. That's our mission. So please lock it in, hit that bell for the notifications. That way, you know, when we're going live, which is multiple times per day. So despite the struggles against the two Arizona teams and now facing maybe the, the revised best challenge of the season before the possible Pac-12 championship game, uh, despite all those struggles, USC continues to be favored every game and will be most likely. So they could make it through this season undefeated, at least to a Pac-12 championship game showdown in which they will need to be much improved to take on what we've seen out of Oregon, uh, most likely uh, emerging from the North. So th th this would have to be tempered. But of course, uh, the, the coaches need to take it game by game. But we're the media. We can speculate. A USC team that's undefeated that continues to scrape by what's going to be an unimpressive schedule <laughs> will be an interesting dilemma for the college football playoff selection committee. I don't think it should be. I, I think if the selection committee is what it's supposed to be, which is an arbiter of, of uh, watching each game, understanding what each team is and, and how competitive each team can be, unless something drastically changes over these next four weeks, I think the college football playoff committee will watch USC and recognize they have no business being in the playoff. And uh, that may depend on what's going on elsewhere in the country. Everybody else might fall flat on their face in the, in this last four weeks. And maybe USC will, will have a case by default because everyone else has losses that, that USC at least gets to say they know how to win. But uh, if you want to talk about USC being in the class of Alabama or Clemson or Ohio State or, or any of those teams, frankly, I don't think USC fans want to see USC play in those games. I, I, I mean, there was talk this week that uh, if if Utah is unable to play, then Notre Dame has an open week. And potentially what if USC and Notre Dame, you know, plugged in that rivalry. I don't think there's any chance of that happening either way. But like my first reaction to that, I know the reaction of a lot of USC fans was no, no one wants to see that be dumb. No one wants to see that embarrassment uh, because that's the way that USC is playing right now. So uh, USC could turn it around and really start to, to get on a roll late in the season. They've done that before and that might change my view on that. But if you're talking about a USC team that's six and zero or seven and zero, where they played about the same as they've played and, and continue to play down to opponents and just, you know, miracle their way to wins because Keaton Slovis is so good in the fourth quarter, then I would lose a lot of faith in the college football playoff committee if they looked at that and thought that's a playoff caliber team. Certainly UCLA and Colorado and uh, Cal pulled together a game in less than 48 hours. I know that with the two open weeks because of the uh, COVID situation, there was a uh, hypothetical talk that meant absolutely nothing about Ohio State and Alabama getting together for like a dream matchup last week. But that would be uh, USC, Notre Dame. Hey, I just love watching great games, so I would want to see it. Notre Dame, I don't think, would want to risk it. Not that they're afraid of USC, but they've got no reason to add another tough game onto their schedule. Uh, Lisa De Artola, please check out her work on Reign of Troy. There it is. She does a great job coming on here and breaking down USC for us. Uh, Alicia, enjoy, enjoy the game and uh, appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, thank you. We'll, we'll see how it goes this weekend. It'll be interesting. <laughs>